Welcome to our channel, Great British Churches. And today we're at St Andrew's Church, Bramfield. So come on in. We this is a little this is gonna be a good one. Come on through, follow me. <sighs> Very unusual, a thatched church with a separate Saxon round tower. Isn't that gorgeous? Now, if you're going to be to Ireland on that, you know the purpose of these is to hide people in and valuables because if the Vikings are here or whoever, they're going to be banging on that door down the bottom. But don't forget that in Courtley's view, you know, H. Munro Courtley, yeah, and um, they were built, all churches were built like this, and the churches were then added to them, but there's no evidence of that. Here, really, obviously it isn't because it's still separate. <clears throat> it is, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it is. It's lovely, and the graveyard is full of really old stones as well. And it goes over there as well. It is, it's, it's lovely. And opposite, there's a crinkle crangle wall, which is one that weaves in and out. It's sort of wavy. And we've got another one that's at East, is it Eastern or Euston? Euston. Euston. And that's the longest one, I believe, in Europe, in Euston. Yep. So we're coming through here. I'm just going to grab. You've got to stop. You can take a breath. You need to take a big breath. Big, deep breath. <laughs> Come on through. Come on through. Right, Isn't that gorgeous? Hang on, they're not in here yet. Yep. What are you waiting for? Come on through. Come on. That's right. I'm and looking then, at the churchyard. All right. And then you have that. Isn't that exquisite? A proper rude screen still in situ. Yeah. Amazing. Shall we get up there and do that in first? I didn't do this way because I think we're going to have people coming in here in a minute. Yeah, because this is going to be a popular church because it is so rare. So this is St. Bramfield's Church, St. Andrew's Church in Bramfield. Lovely map there. Lovely map Gorgeous map. And we've got hatchments here. Um, do you want to have a look to see who the hatchments are for? Yes, they are for. Did you read it on that? Yeah, we have got... Uh, from the font, we have Hatchment, the skull, which is that one up there. Uh, the skull, or death's head as it's called, as the Hatchment indicates that the person died was the last of the line, i.e. there were no heirs. A Hatchment is Ooh. a black diamond shaped board with the paint with a coat of arms. These boards were hung outside the house when somebody died and brought to the church at the funeral. If the coat of arms is inside another diamond and the ribbons at the top rather than the crest, the person commemorated was a woman. A rabbit on top of that, look. Hmm. So Ooh, we've got that one. Yeah, well, there's a horse. Okay. And there's another one over there as well. And oh. another one. That's got a rabbit in it as well, look. Yeah, it's to do with the family. I think it's the, whoever it is. In the, in the well, if you right take there. hold of this, my love. Oh. Coming back, coming back, I'm doing as I'm nice told. Nice cobs, oh. Jura, isn't it? Uh -huh. So, you said that the cob was a bit uninspiring for you. Yes, it, I, I, I thought so. I didn't think it was a very... Oh. We've got people trying to come in. Shall we, shall we have a break? Yeah. We'll have a it's break. It's a 14th century font. There we go. Let's have a... We'll, we'll okay. come back. Hi, so we're back. There was someone who came in, and it is important to say that we don't have exclusive access to these. We turn up when they're empty and they're open. We try not to film when people are here, just to respect their own privacy, really. And apart from anything else, it makes me feel awkward. So, anyway, back to this font. It is a 14th century font, but it's been recut in the 19th century. Now, if you have a look along here, you can see that it definitely looks a bit older than this bit down here. So that's how you can tell. So I've got a font cover. We've seen these before, haven't we? Just these. Just a blank cover. Yeah. 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 So while we were waiting for these people to leave us alone, and we were doing a bit of reading, because I wrote, wrote all these notes down about a fortnight ago and I forgot all about them. 
So these hatchments are for the rabbit family. So you can see that the rabbit family spells their name R A double B E double T. Not the traditional rabbit well, way. Well, to the man for 400 years. There you go. Yeah. He's been doing his reading. Right up until the very last one. <laughs> yeah. And it wasn't Roger Rabbit either. Okay, so there you go. You can see the rude screen. We will get to that in a moment. But I'm going to get Paul to tell you about this because I think he's just done some reading about yes. it. Yes. Um, now, this is a fresco. Here we um, go. And unfortunately, it's been lost at the bottom because you can see the... The flint from the outside of the walls are poking through. There's some pictures there which were done in the 19th century. Somebody, an artist, has, has, has painted. Right, let's see if we can here. get up close. If you can see the colour is going from it. But yeah. There's pictures of angels. How this has survived, we don't know. Apparently, according to the church there records. You can see that there's a sketch there, and then there's sort of a oh, hang on, it's got glass on it. So we've got the reflection of the windows. I'm going to try and pull it. No, it's a... there we go. Let me just see it there. So, um, it's so go on then, Paul. You're going to tell. The church records. It was covered over with a, a screen of religious text on it right up until the 19th century. Oh yes. But uh, it's it's just amazing because this whole church and churches of this period mm. would have been a riot of colour. Well, this church, what was it, built in 1300, wasn't it? It's back 13, 1308 is um, the first vicar. But there's a, there was an early wooden Saxon church here, mm. which, um, well, actually, it, the, the guy was a fan, fellow called Manny's Fort, who was a Dane who owned 800 acres of the village as his estate. So, mm. you know, he'd have been uh, sort of either a Viking or a Saxon. But he was chucked out uh, as an earl, and uh, uh, at the invasion of William the Conqueror in 1066, and a, and a Frenchman mm -hmm. put in his place as a duke, which is how they worked it. And uh, you know, it, it was a complete turnaround. But oh, okay. this so, is the only rule I can think of in the country still here. Well, there are more others, but not probably the same as this. So. <laughs> I'm just coming up here. Now, is this a Stuart pulpit? I'm asking you because you've got all the notes on it. I've got a feeling it must be. I'm not entirely... Mind you, it looks Victorian as well. It's on a single pedestal. There's the steps going into it. Hmm. Perhaps not then. Yeah. So you've got a slab there. For Reginald Babbitt, Rabbit, sorry, of Bramfield Hall in the county of Suffolk, who died on the 30th day of May 1810, aged 39 years, mm -hmm. and of Mary, his wife. I've got to keep him around the corner to read this. Mary, Mary. Who departed this life on the 22nd of February 1832, in the 59th year of her age. This record, to their memory, is affectionately placed here by their children. I wonder if my daughter will ever do anything like that for me. I but just... Told me, it? Yeah. It's... Everywhere on this has been painted. Um, it is astonishing. Now, this is what, 15th, 16th century, did I read? Yeah. Uh, 15th century read. There has been some things you can see. The Victorians put the wooden fronts in. Yeah, it. there's little bits here that have been cut away. Look, you can see that. So they probably would have had like things hanging down, it drops. It was according to the research. Okay. And, uh, but just look at the colour. And it's still oh, there. Wow. You know, if you squint, you can imagine what it would have looked like. It's impressive. Mm. Look at the detail. If we can look on this piece of gold work here, yeah. how the detail in that... That's all been carved. That's carved and painted. There'd have been a little saint or something in there, I would imagine. Think this, is, this is 600 years old, this screen. But you look on the edges, you've got flowers there. Yeah. And you can still see the gilding. Now, it's only the front part here that is... 
the road. Look at these little bits in here, look. Um, it's only the front part. You can see that this bit of wood here is new and everything behind it seems to be fairly new. Not all of it. I can see bits that are old there as well, but there's a lot of Victorian wood in there, I think. But just look. look. We've got some sites at St. Mark and St. Matthew. Yeah. Just look at St. Matthew's face. It is just so beautifully painted. That is, as we say, it's at least 600 years old. It is. It's astonishing. And there's more paint that just goes up and around. You can see this bit there. It's just been chopped out here yeah. at some point. There would have been sort of like finials and things yeah. all coming down, wouldn't there? But it's worth saying that these panels would have been filled in because you would have seen up here. This was mm. where the magic of I the I don't church. think they'd have been solidly filled in. I think no. they would have been sort of lacy, as I would call it. Well, it was a thing of theatre, like, wasn't it? Like that up there. What's, what's up there? I think would fill this in as well. Yeah, yeah. And there might have been other things. Who have we got here on these panels? Um, uh, 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 I think that's uh, Wally. That's James. <laughs> that's a female there. Yep. Or is it? Who is it? Let's have a look. Yes, it is, yeah. Is, isn't she just exquisite? She is. Don't and there'd have been someone there as well, and they've been removed. But how rare the, you know, medieval churches would have been like this. Yeah. A right of colour. There's a yeah. loft up there. You can somebody can walk about. Yeah. Somewhere there would have been a little stair. I think it's there. on the side side. Yeah. It says it in the. Um, oh yes. You can see it's been filled in, but that would have yeah. been a stairway up. I don't know if you're going to see. Oh, you can. Well, you might be able to just see that. So under where that horseshoe-shaped piece of metal sticking out is. Um, that's where it would be. I suppose they're candle holders, aren't they? There's something oh, there as yeah. well. That's a fire extinguisher, I know that. I always read one of them. There you go. Uh, the back of the room is a bit plain compared to the outside. It it's still is. Cold. Still cold, right? It has. But again, I've said it before in these videos the um, nave side of the chancel arch is always more decorative. Mm -hmm. But this side, it didn't need to wow anybody because it was going to be the, the clergy and the vicar and, and all that. They would be the only persons to see it. So it didn't really matter that it wasn't that bright and cheerful and colourful. It was to inspire the people on the other side. And one other important aspect of this church, which I don't think people can gather... Is I don't know why, but it just so smells so strongly of cannabis in it. It's unreal. <laughs> I think he's obsessed. No, I don't think it's cannabis. And then there's another stone there for the rabbit family, Reverend Reginald Rabbit, late rector of Peasenham, Northamptonshire, formerly vicar of Thornton and Bagworth, Lettershire. It was erected by a sorrowing widow. To a clear intellect, he united quite per perseverance. United great perseverance in manners he was affable and tenderly kind and in liberality, liberality uh, oh self-denying and bounded he made the poor his brethren and sorrow and suffering were always a ready passport to his heart he loved all true followers of that saviour whose gospel he preached and adored the bible was his daily study especially the prophetic writings and he published two works on the apocalyptic number 666, Revelations 13, 18. In simple faith in Christ, he calmly fell asleep on the 10th of September, 1860, aged 65 years. Also, Mary, his wife of the Reverend Red Donald Rabbit, M.A., he died May the 20th, 1875, aged 79 years. Blessed are the dead which die unto the Lord. Do you know what I like about this? She must have loved him. You must have done. On the stone here, you've actually got the maker's name, Edwards and Company, 70 Newman Street, Oxford Street, London. So she went all the way from Bramfield to London yeah. to say, can you put a headstone up for my husband? Oh, a nice bit of marble. That yeah. was a long journey. No, no, it was a long journey no, 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 in a car no, no, no. or on a train no, no, now. <laughs> right, now. This is just incredible, isn't it? Like, now, the sanctuary here. I'm gonna. I'm teasing you here. I really am because there is something to my left that has blown our socks off. I knew about it, and Paul knew about it, but we didn't realise how beautiful it was. So I'm gonna tease you a bit. 
But well, look at this, look. We only ever see things like this, this stone, in cathedrals, don't we? Yeah, yeah. Where's that one that looks like a wedding cake behind the altar, that big it's one? Is that Bath and Wells? Oh, it's... Um, or is that Winchester? Winchester, I would imagine. Yeah, yeah it's amazing. But just look at this. That's stunning. The work in that is incredible. I don't think it's that old. No, I, I don't know. I'd imagine. imagine it's Victorian. But it's still an incredible piece of work. It is, so absolutely. It's a building with the work of the scene. Yes. Yeah. Which is good. <laughs> That's a huge turnaround. Yeah. You know, but just look at that. We've obviously got Victorian stained glass here. Yeah. That's not to your taste, is it, love? Oh, I don't like it. It's just a bit, 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 bit <laughs> It's I don't know, but it might be a bit older than Victorian. It's looking warm. I don't think it's medieval. No, no I don't think it's medieval. No. It's to look around. No. Well, William oh, Dayton nice. was here in 1644, in April, I believe. Oh, it's when we get to the first resistance. Right, shall oh. we do that now? Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. You're waiting for this, aren't you? Make a cup of tea later. And here we have. I'm going to start from the top. The so you've obviously you've got the um, you've got armour either side of this. With two mats. Yeah. <laughs> Look how tiny, if that's real armour, look how tiny he would have been. Yeah. That is not big at all, is it? That isn't. It's proper, that's, that's the real McCoy though, isn't it? I need to go up there and clean it. Yeah, I do. But look at this, look. Now this is for, I'm going to let you read that as I'm coming down. Okay, here lies buried Arthur Coke Esquire, third son of Sir Edward Coke, Knight of the late Lord Chief Justice of England and of the Privy Council of King James. Here lieth also buried in the same tomb is Elizabeth, daughter and sole heir apparent of Sir George Waldegrove. And Knight. just look how beautiful she is. She even got her little child. She died in childbirth, didn't she? She died in childbirth. Which I don't know if the child died with her, but she died in childbirth. But just look at the lace. Look at the detail on this. Yeah, this blanket. You feel like you want to grab it and pull it up and cover her over and make her yeah. warm. Yeah. And the pillows, look. Uh... They are, with the, as we now would call them, with the tarsals. 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 She loved a good tarsal, didn't you, now? Anyway, where did you get up to on here? Oh, yeah. Uh, you got Elizabeth Ward 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 Uh Something Elizabeth Christianly and peacefully departed this life on the 14th day of November. Anno Domini 1627, and the said Arthur likewise Christianly and peacefully departed this life at Bury St Edmunds in the county of Suffolk on the 6th day of December 1629. They had issue between them, living up their deceased's four daughters Elizabeth, Mary, Mary Winifred, Winifred, and Theophila. Theophila? Yeah. That's a nice name. Who Almighty God. Prosper and protect. I'm so glad we never had children between us because God knows what you'd have called them. If you think that's nice, well, we never. Daughter, had... now she's called Dave. <laughs> right, okay. Now, there is something here. Now, if Paul can actually find the piece and the bit that I wrote, mm -hmm. um, and it's quite sad. But this church has got lots and lots of ledger stones in the chancel. So you've got three as you come in here, and then you've got a plethora where Paul's feet are. But it's this one that I think people come and see. Um, well, why don't you come up here? You do the camera work, because okay. I'm no good at this. You are. You're better. Right, here we go. You give me the blurb. You give the blurb. I and it's this blurb. one here, MS. This one here, yeah. Let's hover you over, because we can do that. I've got it written out properly so I can read. I haven't got it written. With the magic of washing line here. Mm, okay, so I haven't got it written out. Between no. the remains of her brother no. Edward and, and her, her husband, husband Arthur, Arthur, here lies the body of Bridget Applewhite, once Bridget Nelson. After the fatigues of a married life, borne but we're by her with incredible patience, for four years and three quarters, barring three weeks. 
and after the enjoyment of the glorious freedom of an early and unblemished widowhood for four years and upwards. She resolved to run the risk of a second marriage bed, but death forbade the bans. And having with an ap ap apocalyptic dart, I can't say that word. That's a move like a fit, isn't it? I think so, yeah. yeah. The same instrument with which he had formerly dispatched her mother touched the most vital part of her brain. She must have fallen directly to the ground as one thunderstruck. If she had not been catched and supported by her intended husband, of which invisible bruise, after a struggle for about 60 hours with that grand enemy to life, but the certain and merciful friend of helpless old age, in terrible convulsions, plaintive groans and stupefying, I don't know what that is, and something Sorry. about the recovery of her speech or senses, or without the recovery of her speech or senses. Yeah. She died on the 12th day of September in the year of our Lord, 1737, and of her own age, 44. We hold come as thief, <laughs> revolution six, oh, I can't see all that. But O oh, those source of pious care, strict judge without regard, grant though we go hence up worries, we go not unprepared. Basically, she was shafted by her first husband's family because yeah. all of her wealth went to them. She was about to, she fought hard to get her money back mm -hmm. and her estate and uh, to remarry again. Mm. And uh, it didn't happen. I just think it was too much for her. We reckon it was a stroke, don't we? Well, I think so. You know, it's all about brain. It could be a fit, but Let's I think the stress probably killed her. But this one, they had the Ecclesiastical, Ecclesiastical Society in 1846 came here. Yeah. And they thought that this slab was so revolting and profane, they would not defile the pages of their magazine by printing it. Because it is so... Well, it's truthful, isn't it, to be honest? I get the feeling that this was paid for by her boyfriend. Yeah. Her fiancé. Yeah. I think this is sort of, you've killed her, this is what you've done to her. Yeah. You've made her unhappy. You've put her in the ground. I think this is this is revenge talking here. Isn't yes, it? this is most definitely for it's revenge. It's anger and revenge. And let's be honest I with you. I hope she went back and haunted them. I hope she did. I because hope that's she did. Her husband here. Oh yeah. You, you, and you do feel like you want to stand on there and spit, don't there's you? There's the git. It's good, but um, <laughs> yeah. If you if you think about it, nowadays yeah. you go out and get a tattoo, wouldn't you? But yeah. So. <laughs> Ow. So we've got, here lies the body of Arthur Applewhite, second son of Henry Applewhite, of Huntingfield in this county. Gentleman, huh. uh, who was a favourite and bailiff to Henry Hevingham. Hevingham, Hevingham like Hevingham Hall. Yeah. yeah, Henry Heron and John Dents, deceased and remains. So to Alexander Bents and George Dashwood, all esquires and successfully owners of the Hevingham Hall estate, who died on the 9th day of September. And in the 39th year of his age, he married Bridget, the eldest daughter, and at length, sole heiress of Lambert Nelson, late of this parish, gentleman by whom he had no issue, and to whom I can't read all that. Having by his father's instigation made no will, he left no legacy but a chancery suit mm. with his eldest brother for her own paternal estates in this town. Mm. So this is basically, he's died a couple of years later. And Where did you put that little blowing book? Yes, so back up there on the table. Basically what had happened, he's, he's trying to put his side to... Well, the fa the, his father said to him, do not do a will, because all of her estates, yeah. all of, and all of his estates would go to their family, yeah. not her. Yeah. She had an estate, which was Lambert um, somewhere. Mm -hmm. um, so she had that estate, but it went to the in-laws, yeah. and she wanted it back. And I think it said 1836 or 1856, a law came in that separated a woman's land from her husband. That's right, that's true, yeah. Um, and this is what it was. So we're going about, you know, powerful women and all that. She had absolutely none. She couldn't even travel to see people on no, her own. No, no. You know, she, even as a widow, she wouldn't have had that much freedom. No, no. You know, but then we've got, 
Who is? Isn't who this is here, isn't it? No, 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 it's no, not. no. That sign on there is for this here. this here. Yeah. So we've got the body of Mrs. Bridget Nelson. Now I've got a feeling she got things wrong. Mm -hmm. um, born in this parish, which I call them Bromises, who buried here on the 9th of September 19, 1730. Five, I think. Or was that one? One or the other. Uh, though never married, she freely underwent the care of a wife and mother and often the fatigue of a true friend. For any of her acquaintance in sickness or in distress, distress, she was a devout member of the established church, charitable, prudent, prudent, prudent provider, chaste, yeah. active, and remarkably temperate, yet often afflicted with great sickness. And there we go, and there she's lying there three, with her. That's not her. No, it isn't. And for about okay. three years before her death with dropsy. Dropsy, oh God. She never married. No. She lived with him. Oh, that was a bit of it. That's very 20th time. century thinking, isn't it? Yeah. You know. They're not like us, mate, in the registry office and down the littles for the cake. <laughs> <laughs> we did, yeah. I'm still proud of that. Yeah. Actually, it was Black Forest Gatto, if I remember rightly. And Tiramisu. Tiramisu. Who has and a. And too CV to get us to the church and back. Oh, yeah. With second hand bones. That's true, yeah. We've well, done that cheap, love. We did. Love a look at the rude screen. Yeah. So it's a little church, and I think we've sort of more or less come to the end of what is here. It's an absolute corker, as Paul would call it. This is a little gem. Oh, this is a little gem, it's a change, isn't it? <laughs> so. <clears throat> oh, I haven't noticed the flag up there, I never noticed that. If you liked this video, if you like this video, like and subscribe. Press all the buttons and do the ding dongs down there so you get notifications. And we're going to have a celebration when we get to 10 subscribers. So uh, <laughs> thank you for joining us on this journey. What are we going to do as a celebration when we get to 10 subscribers? It's going to be a cash prize. Of what? Somewhere between 50 pence and a pound, I should imagine. Anyhow, are you going to give it to me, are you? Probably. You get all my money. Yeah. Sarah. <laughs> Bye.